This right here, this closed 80% of my deals. I need to talk to my wife, okay? Yes. Have times changed? Yes. Have people changed? Yes. Have things changed? Yes. Okay, cool. Is it good for you guys to remind people that times have changed, things have changed, and people have changed? Yes. yes. Is there a better way to do business than they've ever done it before? Is there? No, there is a better way to do business than it's ever been done before. Listen to me. Have most people bought something before already that you sell from someone at some point in time? Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you want to tell them that times have changed? So if they're trying to make that purchase deal, like I don't care if they went home and talked to their wife on the last three times. They don't have to on this time because times have changed, things have changed, and people have changed. There's a better way to do business. Am I right? There's an easier way. Your wife doesn't have to be here like back in the days before. Things have changed. Someone needs to explain that when someone is saying, hey, Andy, I like the numbers, but I got to talk to my wife. You got to have something that rolls off your tongue as nice as smooth, okay? So what we do is that we teach word tracks. Now, let me explain this to you, okay? You're not a second-rated version of me. You're a first-rated version of yourself, rule number one, okay? But I want to tell you something. You have to learn a word track before you can get off of the word track, if I say, learn what I just said, and you're like, dude, I like that, but I want to say something different. Cool. Learn my way first, and then make it your own. Switch it off. Change some words. Use some stuff. But memorize something so you have a foundation of the house, then you can build the house. Does that make sense? So the way that I handled this when I sold every time, first of all, I'm going to ask some pretty simple questions, common sense stuff. Would we be driving them on the vehicle if it was the wrong vehicle? No. No. Would we have asked them to bought the car if we'd have felt like it wouldn't have worked or we couldn't have closed them on it? No, we know we can. We're ready to. The wife's not here. Back in the old day, they'd say, hey, get them out of here and, you know, let me know when the wife can come back. Dude, you're an idiot. You let them drive out of here, they're gone. Do they need the wife physically in the house to buy the car? No. Deplating them and putting a plate on the car and having them take it to their wife? Look, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think him and the wife had a conversation and kind of what the deal needed to look like in order for them to make a decision before he came in? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Who's driving it, her or him? Can I ask a question? Would she have sent him in if she wouldn't have been interested in driving that? No. No, she sent him in because she's cool with it. He's cool with it. And if you're sitting in front of him. If the numbers work out and you can make it seem like she doesn't have to come up to the store and there's an easier way to do it, there's a pretty good chance that they'll go ahead and do it. Am I right? All right. Everything will determine the way you speak, the way you talk, and the way the words come out of your mouth. Now, listen to me. There's, three, there's different types of salespeople. You've got order takers and tour guides. You know who they are, right? Yeah, they hand out business cards, walk around the lot all day long. They, don't, they can't sell shit. You've got salesmen, okay? Get out of that stage as fast as possible if that's you. Get out. Okay, you've got salespeople. What are salespeople? Salespeople, they can sell. They know the product. They know what you have. They walk around. They can display stuff. They show products. They give information, but they can't close a screen door. It's just the truth, Okay? Then you got closers. Closers can close, but they don't close for all the money. Okay? That's that guy that comes in. He's like, I'm like, he's like hey, man, I closed that deal. You're like, dude, cool, man. You closed them at the $6.99? Ah, man, I got them at the $5.25, but I closed it up. Okay, cool. So you negotiated down, and you closed it, and you gave up profit. And then there's master closers. Master closers close anybody, anytime, anyplace, anywhere. It doesn't matter. Once I put my arms around you, it's done. You're going to do what I want you to do. We're going to become best friends. We're going to make a connection. I don't do things transactionally. I do things relationally. What does that mean? That means when I come in right away, and, and by the way, being the salespeople in this room, listen to me, the fact that he's a manager and then he sells, you should be 10 times better than him. You know why? Dude, because he pencils deals all day long. He buys cars. He bids trade. He submits stuff. He doesn't sell cars anymore. He's in the leadership. And now, me as a leader, I'm going to tell you this, right? I'm an I'm a, I'm a alpha, alpha leader. I still want to be able to do my job at what I used to do with selling better than my guys who are selling's job. Does that make sense? Do you know why? Because I want them to look up to me. Okay? You want to have an unrecruitable team. Unrecruitable to me is everything. What does that mean? That means you're unrecruitable. You can't be recruited, okay? Number one is you're growing to build your team and you're leading them. Well, you need to be the best. Why? Because when your team's like, man... I want to look up to someone who's the best. Who guess who they're looking up to? Me. Okay? I want to be the source of power for my team. Okay? So every day, I'm sharpening the sword for me to be great at something that I'm not even doing just to show my team that I can do it unbelievable. And guess what? I want them to chase me. I want them to chase me. 
If I was to hand out a piece of paper to everybody in this room right now, and I was to say, everybody write on this piece of paper who your mentors are in life, who you look up to, who you want to be like, I'm going to ask you a question. Would your manager's name be on those pieces of paper? There's a good, a lot of you be like, dude, my manager's name wouldn't be on that. Okay, he's not inspiring you. He's not motivating you. He's not leading you to be the best. So he can change right now in this room, but he's going to have to start working on himself. But watch this. Salespeople, you should be better closers than your managers. It's your responsibility. There's nothing stronger than having re- trust and rapport in, a car, in any deal. In any deal. Who should have the trust and rapport? The sales pro. Am I right? Well, guess what? A closer that walks in on the last 30 seconds is like, hey, give me that sheet. Let me go close that deal. Do you have trust and rapport? No, you don't have it. You just got the sheet 30 seconds ago. But the salesman's had it for two hours. Okay? Just understand that. So that's why you want to learn how to close. How attractive would this be? You can meet and greet people, make them fall in love with you. You can show the product phenomenally. Surface the dominant buying motives, which is why they're here right now. Make them fall in love with you and the product. And then guess what? Be smooth at the way you talk. Be able to walk them right into purchasing it without them even feeling like they're purchasing anything. The coolest thing is buying something when you don't even feel like you're buying it. It's like it's just meant to be. And don't people always wish something like meant, to, they use that word all the time, it's not meant to be. You know what I mean? Well, make it feel meant to be. Whose job's gonna make that feel that way? You. And then when it comes to dealing with the money, when people fall apart, don't fall apart. When people get frustrated, don't get frustrated. When people are having trouble, don't have trouble. When people are feeling uncertain, be the certainty they need to look for. Oh, you need some certainty? Cool, got some right here, buddy. Let's go ahead and keep doing this deal. Are you letting them borrow the courage to pull the trigger, or do you look a little bit scared too? Listen to me. This right here is where we win, okay? 90% of the time, you're outside building value, making sure somebody falls in love with you, whatever. The last 10% of the time you're inside, you're collecting 100% of the money. I see so many people crack, fall, and snap inside because they don't train. So I want to teach you a word track that I used. It was really good. I'll grab one of my coaches. I teach my coaches. My coaches to work for me, they have to know these things. Why? Because they're products of the product. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's grab one of the young ones. Uh, hey, let's grab this little young buck. This kid right here is 21 years old. I'm going to call him a kid, but he's a man. He started with me when he was 19 years old. Guess what happens? Who in here has been through some in life? Raise your hand. Cool. Guy, his dad got killed in front of him and uh, murdered when he was 10 years old. Dude, the guy wants to have a good life. He's surrounded by shitty people. He found himself a car lot. I did. I was lost. Guess what? This man, I started. I realized that I probably didn't have a lot of mentors around me. Guess what? Some of you have great mentors around you, but I didn't. Not at my store. He gets on YouTube. He finds me. Shoots a text message. Kid says, dude, you know what? I've got freaking $1,800 in my account. Where are you at? I was in Oklahoma. He flies out. Guess what? Comes to a seminar. Buys a couple courses. Start training. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days later, he's working for Landers, making 25 grand a month. Isn't it crazy how fast life can change? You know why I love sales? But you know why I love sales? Because you can get the life that you want now. Xander, you don't have to wait to triple your financials for a year. You can do it now. You don't have to wait to double the sales in your store. You can do it now. Nobody has to wait. Do you guys get me? I'm impatient. I like fast wins. I like fast wins. And the harder you train, the more pressure you put on yourself, the faster you get there. But I would train this young man on objections just like this. And then over time, it meant more in him to help other people make money than it did for him to make money. And see, that's real leadership. Okay, me and my wife, we run our company like our guys that work for us are our children. And not that we're, they're kids, they're full grown men, but we want the best for our kids. Does that make sense? If a par- have you ever seen a parent be like, I want a lot of money and I don't want my kids to have anything? No, they want their kids to have everything. As a matter of fact, they're willing to die for their children. That's the way we view our team. We would rather be broke and see our team rich and happy. Does that make sense? It makes us fulfilled. So the guy was willing to give up his money, come into our company, and literally build his way up. But still to this point, even though they don't sell, every day we deal with salespeople in all fields. They have to remember everything that they learned from the beginning because the second you get off the front line, you're finished. 
Okay? So let's hit this young buck with a little objection, and I want you to listen to his words. Number one, I want you to listen to his words. Number two, I want you to listen, does he believe? That's probably the biggest thing, right? Does he believe? Okay? I'm letting him go last. So like you've had the opportunity to talk, you've had the opportunity, you've had the opportunity, you've had the opportunity, right? It's really simple. Look at the way you talk. Look at your words. Look at the way you believe, guys. Look, I'm going to tell you this. You want people to have a good time? You want people to buy and enjoy the buying experience? Have a good time. Guys, when I used to talk to people, I'm just telling you, when I was selling a man, I would get knee to knee. I'd put my hand right there with them, man. I'd be laughing. They're getting stressed out about the money. I'm laughing, right? Why? Why? Because we ain't going that way. We ain't going that direction. You ain't going to get all serious. Once you get serious, I'm, I can't, you can't do, you can't save a deal when people get too serious. There's something in somebody's heart when it gets cold, nobody can close a cold customer. Don't ever let their hearts get cold, okay? Listen to me. Whose job is it to protect the state? It's yours. Some of you, you're like, Andy, look, this is the master closer seminar. It's real simple. You want to sit across from somebody? You want to make them feel great? Good. Talk to them like you want them to feel great. Does that make sense? And make your words flow smooth like water so you know what you want to say, okay? So, Jacob, it's pretty simple. We're on the negotiation table, price trade payments, right? And you can just talk to the crowd. You don't have to look at me. Um, I'm going to say, hey, I appreciate you, Jacob. I like the numbers, but I want to talk to my wife. Now, do they like the car? Yes. Yeah, because you wouldn't be this far without it, okay? Genuinely, did they probably have a conversation what the deal needed to look like in order to make a decision? Yes, most times they did. They, they're not going to tell you they did, but they did. Does that make sense? Okay, all right, so let's roll. Ready? Go. Hey, Andy, I totally understand. As busy as life is for most people, when it comes to purchasing a vehicle, especially with the family, it's generally a planned event. When you left your driveway this morning, I'm almost certain that you and your wife had a conversation on what the deal needed to look like in order for you to feel completely comfortable making a decision. You said you love the vehicle, that you'd be extremely happy with the safety and the fuel economy, and we're well within your budget. So, Andy, let me ask you a question. If I could save your wife the trouble of having to come all the way down to the dealership, plus save her the time of having to sit through the entire process, and you could be the hero that takes all of the headache out of the deal. Would that upset your wife in any way, in any way at all, if I can do that for you? Would it? Thank goodness. That's it. It's very simple. It's very simple. Now listen. Watch this. Does he know what he wants to say? Okay, watch this. What did I say earlier? I said be machine-like. Am I right? Okay, we're going to start moving through objections faster, but I want you to understand what machine-like looks like, okay? All right, you ready? All right, I need to talk to my wife. Go, go fast. I totally understand. As busy as life is for most people, when it comes to purchasing a vehicle, especially with the family, it's generally a planned event. When you left your driveway this morning, I'm almost certain that you and your wife had a conversation on what the deal needed to look like in order for you to feel completely comfortable making a decision. You said you love the vehicle, that you'd be extremely happy with the safety and the fuel economy, and we're well within your budget. So, Andy, let me ask you a question. If I could save your wife the trouble of having to come all the way down to the dealership, plus save her the time of having to sit through the entire process, and you could be the hero that that takes all of the headache out of the deal, would that upset your wife in any way, in any way at all? And he takes his hand and he sticks it in their chest, okay? Listen Thank to goodness. me. I want to explain something to you. This right here, this closed 80% of my deals. I need to talk to my wife, okay? 80% of it. Look, nothing's 10 for 10, okay? Look, I have the delusional belief you can close 10 for 10. You need to have the delusional belief you can close 10 for 10, but you need to have something on your heart. My deal is if I grabbed all you guys right now and I said, hey, I need to talk to my wife, go. Do you know what you're going to say? Do you know? If you don't know, you need to know right now. So write down on your piece of paper, I need to talk to my wife. 